wanna be close, close to your side. So heaven is real and death is a lie. I wanna hear voices of angels above singing as one. Good morning, good morning. We're glad you're with us. Can you believe this is the final Sunday of August? Wow. Time does fly quickly, doesn't it? We're gonna be getting in. I wanna remind the congregation that, um, again, we're looking at things and, and we're gonna be hopefully giving you some um, decisions about some of our fall activities very, very soon. Uh, just wait to hear for those, okay? But the most important thing today is to get into the Word of God, to have Him encourage us, to have Him bless, so that we can be better and stronger Christians. 
for the gospel of Jesus Christ, the good news. So you ready for some good news? Well, we've got some from God's word, so let's get ready. Let's pray. Lord, today we want to truly allow your word to penetrate our hearts, to change us, shift us, sift us, and mold us. So, Lord, my prayer today is that you would help us in all that we do. Lord, we want to see your glory, and we want to know, Lord, your presence is here. We praise you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. A few years ago, I had the honor of attending a prayer meeting in Brooklyn that was led by our former um, Assemblies of God Superintendent Thomas Tresk. Now, there were about 800 people gathered, and they lifted up their voices to God. It was, it was a four-hour gathering. It was so precious, and it was so wonderful. And, and any care of the world that you walked in with was, was overshadowed by the presence of God. But I remember one of the pastors that spoke that morning challenged us about prayer being sown in tears and reaping with joy. Prayers that were sown in tears but reaping with joy. You know, one of the key elements we've heard about all the time is the word truth. There's a saying that says, one man's truth is another man's lie. We've heard your truth is not my truth. And then the final thing, there is no more absolute truth. Or is there? Yes, I believe there is. And trusting God in hard times, now, now let's make sure it's clear. Um, it certainly has its obstacles. But God's word encourages believers to persevere and not to let any mental or physical weariness prevail over us. Not to be faint and not to lose heart. Joshua 1.9, 9, 1, 9, remember that? Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid nor dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. See, it's during the troubled times, and obviously we're in one of those troubled times. Again, this week brought out with unrest that has come in. Hearing more about the COVID-19, and then, of course, all the last couple of weeks, the back and forth of politics. Uh, it, it's not a pleasant time in this nation. It's a troubling time in this nation. And the one thing we don't want to be is pulled down with it. Yes, we want to encourage and help, uh, be part of the solution, not the problem. We know that. But we've got to take care of ourselves first. We've got to make sure that there's, there's, there's something special working through us in these troubled times. It's so important that Christians rise above the trouble. And when I mean rise above, it doesn't mean they're greater than anybody else. It means that they're doing something positive to affect change. Not just for our nation. Yes, we want it for our nation, but for the cause and the gospel of Jesus Christ. The good news, so they know that Jesus is alive. Now, history is filled with stories about troubled times that the heroes of the Christian faith endured. But there's also hearing about their times of spiritual drought. My friends, there is dry times for a Christian. Now, the last few weeks we talked about sin and how we can have victory over sin. But there are times on that, on that trek that we're on that we're so dry um, that, that we just feel weak. Uh, I, I remember a number of years ago doing, being away and being out in the sun and, and doing work and everything that I remember coming home and I'm not feeling well at all. I mean, at all. Horrible, 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 horrible to the point where I had to go to the ER because I was just so weak. And they, they checked me out and they said, well, Ron, you're dehydrated. See, dehydrated? I said, yes, you're very dehydrated. You, you have not taken in enough of the water. And dehydration for the, for the physical body, that could be very problematic. We know that. 
So we've got to be careful that we're taking in the liquids and not just that coffee or, well, for me, cappuccino <laughs> or, or soda. You're taught them in, in water, not a health class. It's just a reality. We got to keep taking water in to help sure, make sure we're not dehydrated. Well, did you ever think your spiritual life can become dehydrated too? And when you do, it's the same principle. You become weak. You become tired. It, it could be you just have not taken in the presence of God. Maybe you're feeling, oh God, where have you been? What are you doing? I'm not reading it enough. I'm not praying enough. And, and maybe instead of doing all those things, we're just not enjoying the presence of God. We're not enjoying life that God has given, whether it is whether we're on a high or whether we're low. And, and that's what we've got to be careful of in being dry. In fact, it's interesting because this is why David, a man that was described a man after God's own heart, he was crying out when he said, now this was after the whole Bathsheba incident, uh, Nathan came, the child, his firstborn, uh, had died, and he cried out to God and said in Psalm 51, Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. You see, there, there's a great, we use water, but there's a great, great characteristic of God that we should be taking in to, to hydrate our spiritual person. And that is joy. Joy. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 16 and 17 tells us this. Therefore, we do not lose heart, though outwardly we are wasting away. That's this body. Inwardly, we are being renewed day by day. Now, this is the key of the verse. I'm a, I hope you're watching and reading it, but, but, but listen and take this in. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that shall outweigh them all. My friends, are, are you hearing this? I mean, if you, boy, if there is ever a promise to believe after Jesus died and rose again for our sins, believe this promise. That everything that we are going through in life, uh, the, the good times, those horrible times, you may be in that. I, I just spoke to a man, crisis of faith, who, who's, who's dealing with that. All that matters at the moment is, is God is saying, listen, don't forget, don't lose heart, Christian. Because he calls this life momentary. He, he calls, James calls our life a vapor. When you compare this life to the eternity with God that awaits us, it's a drop in the bucket. And we shouldn't let these 70, 80, 90, and for some it's a lot less. Whatever years we're given on planet Earth, we should be strong in the power of the Lord because in those moments, even through the chaos, God can give us joy. So it's important that during these troubling times, we don't lose truth. We hold on to the truth. And the Word of God gives us truth. And that's what I want to share with you today. You know, it's interesting because I remember as a young boy, my father said, hey, guys, you know, my, to my two brothers and my sister, we're going we're gonna to drive to Florida. Let's go. You know, I don't remember my telling, me telling my father, hey, Dad, listen, I had a bad week. I don't really think I'll enjoy Florida. Maybe uh, you should go and just leave me back. No, I gladly went because my father had everything under control. Listen, our Father, God, in the midst of the chaos, has everything under control. I'd like to remind you, when something occurs on planet Earth, God doesn't look at one of the angels and say, did you see that? Where did that come from? God never says that. We do. He doesn't. So everything has to have a purpose. So there's a, a few truths that I want to share to you about joy. And it comes in, in the book of Psalms 126. So I would appreciate if we can get there. Psalm 126. All right. And, and let's look and see where we go with this. Psalm 126 verse 1 says this. 
when the Lord brought back the captivity of Zion, we were like those who dream. Then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue was singing. Then they said among the nations, The Lord has done great things for them. Praise the Lord. The first thing I want to share with you is the truth is that He is the God who gives joy to His people. God gives the joy. Joy comes from God. We'll, we'll talk in a few moments about happy and joy in a moment. But but verse 1 and 2 are, are, are giving praise to a great event that occurred in, in uh, if you will, the people of Israel's history. Um, Israel had been sent to exile, if you can remember, especially the, the minor prophets speak about that time. And they have been sent into captivity, the Babylonian captivity. But be, and it's because of their unfaithfulness to God. Now, it's important to get to understand the context of this. It was the un, uh, time of, of, of the kings turning away from God, you know, and, and, and leading the people in that way. That serious punishments happened in the life of that nation. And they lost their land. And yet, after a long period of time, God led them back to their land. That's why it's important that we understand even today that, that, that where, where the people of Israel are, that is their land given to them by God. Very, very important. You take the physical and the spiritual application on that. And so, of course, they're excited. They're, they're, they're happy as can be. God led them back, and it describes their response. It's almost like they're walking in a dream. Did you ever have that? It's like, I can't believe this is happening. This is a dream. It's like, don't wake me up if it is. I want to be able to live this. They actually saw after those years and decades and decades. Remember, even it was the next generation that went in and they had heard about their, their homeland. They were going back into it. I can imagine the children that were in captivity where they were young. And now they're in their 70s and 80s, probably, or 90s even. And they're walking back. And they're seeing the land. So part of what brings us joy are the real things that God does in our life. And that's why when we read about Him in Scripture, we, we understand that God loves His people. And then when we hear the testimony... I'm not just talking about testimony of nice things. I'm talking about what God has done, how God orchestrated so many wonderful things. It brings joy. Now, let, let's, let's get clear about the definition of joy. I know you've heard this from me, but I think it bears repeating. Joy is a state of happiness in communion with God. Okay? It is in communion. I can't stress that enough. It's in communion or connection with God. That's why the more you stay in God, it says your joy will be full. Happiness is based on situations. Being happy is, is being based. A, a, a happy, you can be happy at a moment and then mad the next, and then sad. But joy allows you, not, again, we're not talking about the smile. That's not joy. Joy is the state of communion that allows you to move forward, to be able to have a clear mind, to be able to do the things that God, that, that's what's important. That's why it was so important that during this time of this pandemic, a pandemic, and during this time of, of, of unrest, and as we've seen so many people hurt, either being victims of this, one way or the other, no matter where it was, listen, it's all around, Okay. How many of them still had the joy of the Lord flowing, even in trouble? Yes, I'm not expecting them to be smiling and happy. When you're troubled, you, your, your thoughts go to that. You, you react in that way. It's normal. It's human. It's technically how we're designed. But the joy of the Lord allows you to move forward. It still allows you to pray. The second you say, I can't pray anymore, I can't read my Bible, not won't, can't. When you say, I can't, I, 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 whatever it is that's in the presence of God that you say, I don't want to do it. That's where the concern is. That's where you say, is my joy gone? 
be very, very, very careful. Okay? That's why we see when, when Jeremiah 9, 23, he wrote, Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. Let not the mighty man glory in his might. Nor let the rich man glory in his riches. But let him who glories glory in this. You ready? Here it is. That he, hallelujah, understands and he, hallelujah, knows me. That I am the Lord exercising loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. We, we don't rejoice in the temporal things that come and go. We don't rejoice in happiness. We rejoice in the joy and the glory that says that no matter what, God is with us. Oh, pastor, but look at me. You're, you're, you're looking at the temporal things. I remember one person once made a comment and said, why can't I just get a break from God? And in my mind, I didn't want to upset him. I probably told him later. But I said, I was thinking in my mind, you know what you did? When Jesus died on that cross, you got a break. Because you're now eternally with him. See, you got to take those things. You can't just take the moment and let it maneuver you. You could be cautious in it. You could use wisdom in it. But be careful of how much it shapes you. Because if you go from joy to concern... If you go from joy to doubt, look what you've done. If joy is here, if God is here, and those things are here, where's God? It's almost like what we talked about with sin. Remember, <clears throat> this is missing the mark. This is the bullseye. If you're over here, what did we call the stuff in between? What did we call it? That's right, the sin of the arrow. Be very careful that when you see yourself getting angry, saying things, doing things, thoughts that shouldn't come in, wh wh where are you shifting to? The arrow's here. If your bullseye is here, where are you shifting to? Be very, very careful. Okay, so, so that's why God gives the joy. You see, the trials that are found um, are, are found not in the immediate situation, but in the revelation of God's love. First Peter 7, uh, verse 1, verse 7 says this, that the current trials bring an assurance of faith. Making our future joy even greater when Jesus returns. Similarly, James 1 says trials will strengthen our character. We can have the joy that God gives. So again, th this first part is not about you smiling all the time and saying I'm stress free. I'm sorry. Those things are going to be there. I don't know to what degree. I don't know how much. But the fact is that God can restore what was taken away. And we can rest in that joy. So, yes, during a pandemic, we can worship God and say, I love you, Jesus. During unrest, we can say, Lord, thank you, God, for your protection and guidance. Give wisdom, give direction, help to the authorities that need it. During anything that goes on, this whole political uh, craziness, I'm going to say, I know we got to go through it every four years, but, but we can say, Lord, Lord, give your wisdom. Lord, the, the person that you want in that office, God, we, we submit that to you. And we pray, Lord, that your will would be accomplished. So that's the first part. You see, the truth is that God gives joy to his people. So how do you stay in that joy? Come on, real quick. How do you stay in that joy? You, you stay centered with God. If you start to drift then you know that you're outside of that joy and it's not going to come in. So that's the first thing I want to share with you this morning. Uh, the second thing is found in one, uh, Psalm 126, verse 3. And it says, The Lord has done great things for us, and we are glad. Bring back our captivity, O Lord, as the streams in the south. Now the psalmist is asking God to make Israel a great nation again. So the second thing I want to point to you is this, is the truth is that he is the God who brings refreshing times to his people. He talks about the streams of the south. And the King James Version talks about the streams of Negev. Now, now I, I want to just quickly explain that to you, the streams of the south. 
He's referring to the southern wilderness of Israel. Now, I've never been there. I hope to get there one day um, to see some of these areas. <clears throat> and it's where the, there are dry riverbeds. And they are dry as dust in the dry season. And they're mostly cloudless. There's no hope for rain, and it's very, very hot. It's in incredibly dry. But in the rainy season now, season, now listen to this. The waters hit the earth, and the dry riverbeds are now filled and begin to carry the water all through the southern part of Israel. The prayer is that God's blessing to overflow the banks, like the streams in the desert. So, so what we're saying is, when it's dry, it's dry. But Lord... Please bring your presence so that um, the rainy season can refresh those dry banks again. And that's the prayer for us. Refresh our life, Lord, in this rainy season. See, Jesus taught us a similar prayer. Remember in Matthew chapter 6, he said, your, your kingdom come to God. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. The Bible tells us that when God's kingdom comes in its fullness, he will wipe away every tear from our eye and there'll be no more death and mourning or crying or pain for the old order of things have passed away. And that's Revelation 21. So to pray for God's kingdom to come is to pray for the greatest possible restoration this universe will ever know. You see, right now, we get the rainy season of his presence. We get what, what I, what's called just a taste of God's presence. Now, for those of you that um, know that, either being in church or some spending or setting or even at your home, you know what it is, believers. See, for those that don't understand, it, it's hard to explain it in words because the Bible taught us we walk by faith, not by sight. So, so to give a clear explanation so that someone who has never been involved it's tough. But those of you that are listening, you know what it's like when you're in deep in the presence of God. There's a refreshing that comes. Almost like when, if you walked in angry, you, you feel good. And I remember one person telling me, I walked in angry. I felt good. I just don't know why. My problem is still there. Why am I not as angry anymore? It's because the rainy season came. God's presence and covered. See, I, I, if, if you're looking at it through, through just the eyes, again, i got to stress this, you're, you're not going to get it. It's, it's going to be so difficult. You've got to look at it in, in, a, in an idea of refreshment of your spirit, of your soul. Remember, the flesh, it, it wants to do what it wants, okay? The soul, the spirit, the soul wants to be connected to God 24-7. So when the flesh fights it, that's why there's a problem. That's why being in the presence of God is so important. But, but not only do we pray for the future coming of God's kingdom, which we do, and it's going to happen, and it gets closer every day. We also pray for God's rule to be increasingly revealed in our lives. We want to know more and more, more of His will. Now, there's the caution. We want to know more and more of His will. But we just don't know if we're going to follow that. Job 30, 20 says, I cry out to you, but you do not answer me. I stand up and you, do regard, and you regard me, but you have become cruel to me. And with the strength of your hand, you oppose me. That's when doubt comes in. And my friends, we've got to be careful because God's refreshing. Any doubt that comes in can begin to chip away at that. We have got to be very, very careful about what God has given to us. You know, when doubt comes in and it overtakes our life, then anything people tell us, uh, the encouragement we get from the Word of God, it kind of just goes like this. Be careful. Be careful. God still has our best, okay? Whether this body is responding to that or not, whether this mind acknowledges or not, God still has our best. He always will. He always does. So here's two truths that I bring to you this morning. Think of that. That God brings joy to his people and that God brings refreshing. That if you're in a dry season of your spiritual life, if the concern about this um, 
pandemic has overtaken you, all the politics and unrest has overtaken you, and, and you can't pray to God, you can't read his word, you're just so troubled, then my friends, my encouragement is get back in the presence of God. How do you do it? I can't say it enough. We just learned last week, remember? Every day, somehow, in some way, get in the presence of God. Take his word in. Pray. Take in Christian music. Worship music that will honor and exalt his name. Well, listen, we're going to have to stop for there today. Next week, we're going to wrap this up because there's two more truths that I want to bring to you about God and joy. So I hope you'll be with us. Um, very exciting to see what the Lord is going to do. But, but in the meantime, if you're in that dry season, the rainy season is here. Okay, it's not necessarily in the sky. Of course, you know, with all the rain going on, who knows? <laughs> but in our spiritual life, the rain, the presence of God is going to refresh, give us our joy. Father, thank you for the truth of your word. Thank you, God, you bring us to that truth. And my prayer today, Lord, is if we are dry, Father, we want your joy. We want your refreshing. So, Lord, we will pray and we will read and we will worship you. To God be the glory, great things he has done. In the name of Jesus, amen. Hey, listen, God bless you. Hope to see you soon. All right, reach out. You see all the events going on and we'll talk to you. Blessings. Hi, thank you for watching our online Bible study. There's three things I want to remind you of. First of all, in giving to the work of the Lord through Full Gospel Church, you have two opportunities. One is through our website, livingstonfullgospel.com, and you just click the Give button and follow the instructions there. Or you can mail directly to the church, 190 West Northfield Road, Livingston, New Jersey, 07039. Secondly, I want to remind you that during the week, our video series, Just a Minute, is going to be playing every Monday, and we hope that will encourage your heart also. Remember also to check on those who are in need. Maybe you can't get out right now, but you can put a call in or a text or an email. Just check on them, okay? Lord willing, we'll see you soon.